have here. Now, I know for a fact that it's not my child, my underage child, walking through the door at 4 a.m. What am I doing awake? No, 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 no. It's not about me. What are you doing out of my house in the middle of the night without permission and coming home this late? Or should I say early? Oh, you can explain? Mm, good. You'll have a lot of explaining to do. Put that bag down. So, where have you been? A uh, friend's house. Which friend? I don't know them. Hmm, interesting. I thought that I knew all of your friends. No? Okay. Well, as irritated and angry that I am right now, and I just want to ground you, take your phone, take your computer, take everything you own, and make your life miserable for going behind my back and doing such a dangerous and disrespectful thing, what I would like you to do is sit down, because we are going to have a adult conversation. Since you want to act like an adult, I'll treat you like one. And we're going to talk about why what you're doing is completely, completely, utterly unacceptable. It's unacceptable, okay? So, first of all, give me this bag. Let's see what you got in here. Oh, you don't want me to go through it? Oh, that's too damn bad. I'm going to search every item that's in this bag. Is there something you want to tell me before I do? No? Okay. This bag that I bought you, number one. And now you're using it to plot against me or what? Okay. Not too bad. this? A sweet tart candy? And you didn't give me any? Hmm. A lemon starburst. Well, I'm going to open it and taint it. So you can't eat it and enjoy because I'm mad at you. <laughs> Another sweet tart. Can you go through this bag and get all this junk out of here, please? There's like 10 sweet tarts in the bottom of this bag. Let's go to the main compartment. What is that? That's not my bottle of vodka from the freezer. What are you doing with it? <laughs> are you out of your mind? Why would you bring this anywhere? First of all, it's an open bottle. Do you know that it's illegal to drive with an open bottle in your car? Number one. Number two, you're not even of age to drink, so why in God's name would you do that? Ooh, now you're really ticking me off. Don't ever take my stuff without asking 
especially non-alcohol are more insane. What is this? It's not yours? No. Are you? It's some glue. Oh. Really? Re really? Are we really about to have this conversation right now? Why would you take... First of all, why would you take... Have you been drinking and driving? Oh. I think I'm simply going to pass away right now because I cannot believe that you're doing this to me. All right, we're about to have a real deal conversation right now. Okay, I guess I'm going to have to go in my brain and unlock my traumatic, very traumatic memories to explain to you and to get it through your thick skull, you idiot. Um, why this is simply not okay. This is not even remotely in any way, shape, or form on any planet, in any galaxy, in any universe. Okay. So listen, okay? First of all, I'm entirely disappointed. There's no reason why you should have either of these things. The only good thing that this is for is lighting a candle and you don't even need this kind right now you need the one with the long stem that you can just put down in the candle and light it this no 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 no. you do not need a bick and you do not need any other kind of lighter like this are you smoking now smoking what you don't smoke anything good you better freaking not Listen, <sighs> I'm trying to relax because my blood pressure is here and it needs to be here, okay? So, let me tell you a story. Number one, you can't leave this house while you're under age and don't tell- even if you were 18, you can't leave this house without telling me where you are. First, you need to ask my permission. You know 9 times out of 10, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, that I always will let you do what you want or go where you want when you ask. Do I not? Yeah, I always do. So, the fact that you thought it was okay to sneak out, what time did you leave? <gasps> you are gone for 3 hours? Do you know how much could have happened in those 3 hours? No, you don't, because you don't have the ability to think of consequences, I guess. So, I need to know where you're at as a parent, because if something were to happen to you, God forbid, because I would be a wreck, you're my world. If something were to happen to you, how will I even know where you went, where to look for you, who you're with? So, unfortunately, I have a personal story for you about this. When I was about 15 or 16, you know, I used to think that I could just leave the house if I wanted to, and I didn't have to ask my parents' permission because they'll never know, right? They'll never know. How will they know? So, I thought the same thing. A couple times left here and there, of course, and luckily, I never got into any trouble. No bodily harm had ever come of me. But my friend in school wasn't so lucky. You see, she was the type who she liked to leave behind her parents' back. Her parents were much more strict than mine. They said no more than mine did. And she wanted to do what she wanted to do. Because she thought she was an adult, she thought she could take care of herself, and nobody was going to tell her what to do. And guess what happened? Well, one evening in the summer, school was out, it was supposed to be a great, great summer, 
and we had plans. We were going to go to a party. Of course, I told my mom that I was going to be going to her house. She told her mom nothing because she had already asked permission to go to the party. Parents said no. Fine. She was supposed to be in her room and she snuck out. Do you know how they know that she snuck out? And the only distinctive factor or physical evidence is because her room window was cracked just the slightest bit, okay? But do you know what happened? Nobody knows where she went. Nobody knows what happened to her. And it's been 10 years now and nobody has ever seen or heard from her again. Do you get what I'm telling you? Yeah, so I'm sure that she expected to just sneak out for a few hours like you did and come home and everything would be fine. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. And guess what? Her parents never knew where to even begin looking for her, who to even contact to start looking for her because she never told anybody where she was going. And so the point is... Though you may have the best of intentions of going out and having a good time and then coming back home, sneaking through the door or the window, whatever the case may be, unfortunately, there is people out there who have very ill intentions and want to cause harm to other innocent people and tear families apart, destroy lives, hurt people in terrible ways, and you have to realize That when people don't know where you are, you're more susceptible to these things happening because you're in a very vulnerable situation, especially when it's late at night, especially in the early hours of the morning. It's dark, maybe dreary, rainy. It was that summer night. And my friend has never been seen again. So imagine how that weighs on her parents. Imagine how that weighs on me as a friend, you know, in general. It's utterly horrifying to think that your child might just sneak out for a night of fun. You don't know because you're in bed sleep or you're in bed reading like I probably was when you snuck out. And I had no idea, not an inkling or a clue or a thought that you weren't inside the house. So when I woke up and I saw that you weren't here, you cannot even begin to imagine the fear that ran through my body my blood ran cold. Yeah, ice cold freezing. Okay, do you get what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm telling you? No, I need you to take it seriously because it's not a joke. I know that probably a hundred people out of 101 people can go out and have fun and sneak back in and nothing happens to them. But what happens when you're that one person and you become the statistic of the one that didn't make it back. What would I do? How would I go on with my life? Okay? So, the other thing that I want to tell you is um, about consuming... I think I broke my foot. The other thing is about consuming anything around people, whether that be okay, elk over there, or whether that be smoking something, I will tell you another personal story, and then I will wrap this lecture up, because (laughs) by the time I tell you this next story, you're going to learn your lesson. So, I was just over 18 years old, and I had gone with a couple of friends that I just met recently. You're telling me that I don't know your friends that you are with tonight. So if you just met them recently and you think that they're your friends, let me tell you a horrifying story to make you rethink, reevaluate, and reconsider if these people really are your friends. So, when I was just over 18, like I said, I went with some friends that I met at school. I was at college at the time. And we had gone to a party, just a little house party get-together, right? We were only there for a few minutes, and then we were going to go to the movies. Well, someone 
one of the people in one of the friend groups who I was associating with had rolled up a little greenery, you know. At the time, I wasn't um, a smoker. I had only dabbled in it here and there. I'm no saint. But this night in particular, I said, eh, screw it. I'll take a few hits, right? No big deal. And unfortunately, I was a little bit naive and thought that I would be okay to just go on about my night after taking a couple puffs, no big deal. So, what did I do? Hit this little rolled up doobie a couple times, maybe one, two, three, maybe three times, right? Now, I had smoked in the past. Like I said, not an angel, not perfect. Only smoked a few times in the past. When I had smoked this, for some reason, immediately, it felt different than ever before. And immediately, I said, What is this? Like, something's not right. Well, I began to not feel good right away. Now, I told you, there like three puffs of this, right? I said I need to go home. Now, me being, like I said, a little bit naive and just not thinking of consequences like you weren't, I thought that I would be okay to drive home because I only took three hits. Let me tell you what happened when I was driving home. Luckily, it was less than a five-minute drive until where I was till I got home. By the time that I had maybe two minutes left to my drive, I could barely even breathe because my heart was racing so fast that I could barely even, I don't know, I can't tell you how I felt. I just know that I was trying to take deep breaths. I felt like I was simply floating off of my seat while I was driving, while I was strapped in. By the time that I pulled into the driveway of my house and unbuckled my seatbelt, I had to actually crawl into my house because I couldn't even stand up. I was so dizzy, so disoriented. I looked down at my chest and I could see my heart literally pumping out of my chest. I had never felt anything like this in my life. I could barely see. Everything was just a blur. And do you know what I found out later the next day? Well, what I had smoked, thinking that it was just straight Mary Jane, was actually laced with PCP. Do you know what that is? It's a terrible, 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 terrible drug. And that was the first and the last time that I ever took any type of substance or drink or whatever the case may be from anyone that I thought was a friend who I didn't trust. You never drink a drink that you don't pour yourself. You never smoke anything you don't roll yourself. I'm sorry, if you're going to do it, you have to do it the most responsible way. I don't want you doing any of that. You don't need to drink you don't need to smoke anything, but I need you to know that even though you think that you're safe and it's no big deal, even just one puff, I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life in the hospital that night. You, <laughs> I'm lost for words because like I don't bring this memory up much because it was horrifying, but I need you to just get the idea and grasp the severity of the situation and just know that it's not safe and I don't want you risking your life I don't want you getting sick and I don't want you being in a vulnerable state a vulnerable state where you might get hurt or someone else gets hurt it's not worth it you might think you're gonna have a good time but baby it's not fun it's not and so what I want you to take from this conversation Though I'm extremely upset and very irritated, especially, don't ever do that again, I could just smack you in the head with this. Don't ever touch that again. Or any of anything until you're 21 or whatever age you need to be legally. Just think about what I'm telling you. Life is about learning from other people's experiences, learning from, unfortunately, sometimes when things bad things happen to people 
it can be a learning lesson and it's unfortunate that sometimes bad things have to happen so that other people can learn from it but that's why it's called a life lesson and that's why we are supposed to take our experiences whether they be good bad ugly take them and learn from them and teach other people so while i'm severely disappointed in you like i have mentioned i need you to promise me pr pinky promise me that you're gonna learn from this and you will never do that again do you promise because i could never live with myself if something happened to you and it was because i didn't teach you enough or i didn't instill the fear in your mind i'm not telling you to go through life being petrified of everyone and everything no 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 it's not about that but when you're putting yourself in a vulnerable situation or a potentially vulnerable situation i want you to think back to this living room this night or morning this conversation my face and my stories okay because it might save your life it might save a friend's life you never truly know okay do you understand why i'm telling you this yeah okay well um, i can't let you get away with nothing so nothing fun for a week no plans no friends no hanging out i don't care you can be mad disappointed all you want you're lucky i'm not doing more than that lucky i'm not calling the police for something on you <laughs> not gonna do that because this is my job to fix this behavior and i just need you to be more responsible i know you want to be an adult and you will be soon but you want to make it to being an adult right a lot of people don't get that chance so be smart be wise make very responsible decisions just make me proud and make yourself proud all right you'll thank yourself later in life for it well, I love you so much. Disappointed, but I forgive you as long as this behavior does not continue. And why don't you go ahead and get a shower and get to bed? I'm sure you're quite tired. <sighs> you stress me out. I probably have a million gray hairs growing just from this. <sighs> Alright, I'll see you in the morning after proper rest. And hopefully we don't have to have this conversation again. <laughs>